Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back to do another first thoughts and initial impressions video. This one will be for Midnight Gala Lilius, who was just shown this morning earlier over on YouTube. As with all of these impressions videos, I'll be giving you my two cents on whether or not I think the character is good, where I'd play them, what kinds of gear and artifacts I would actually play them on. And without wasting too much more time on the introduction, let's take a look at Midnight Gala Lilius's S3 animation. Filth always hides in the shadows. Once in a while, you just need to bring everything to light. Come on, struggle. Try your best. Though it won't make a difference. Every darkness has its own distinct... Well, that's not the best S3 animation I think we've seen all year. I still think it's pretty good. Lilius in general gets some pretty fire animations, I feel like. So this is just another one to add to the pile. As for voice actor trivia... Midnight Gala Lilius is voiced by Serena Fialo in the English dub of Epic 7. She obviously does the voice of regular Lilius and Conqueror Lilius. You may also recognize her voice as Elena or Astromancer Elena. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Lilius is voiced by Aya Endo, who you can hear as Alir in Fire Emblem Engage, as well as Yelan in Genshin Impact. Moving on to Lilius' stat, she is an Earth Thief of the Libra Zodiac symbol. Her stat line is unique to her. She has 1,208 attack, 5,178 health, 121 base speed, 508 defense, 15% critical hit chance, 165% critical hit damage, 3% dual attack chance, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. Imprint release for the team is attack percentage, and imprint concentration is going to be 18% attack. Wow, what a stat line. Very high base attack for uh, a character in general. Anything over 1,200 is quite high. 1,300 plus is pretty ludicrous. 121 base speed puts her on par with Conqueror Lilius and puts her in that pretty much opener speed bracket. One of the best pretty much in the game. The health and defense are lackluster, but in general, Thieves kind of have bad stats in general in these departments, so we kind of give it a pass. And 165% starting critical hit damage is obviously well above average because almost the entire cast is 150% to start. Before we take a look at the analysis, let's quickly read through all of her skills starting with the S2 because that is the first one that is shown in the video. So, Midnight Galileus' S2 is elaborate scheme. At the start of battle and at the end of the turn, grants damage limit to the caster for one turn. After attacking on the caster's turn, when the target's health is 50% or less, activates now or never. Now or never can only be activated once every three turns. First up, let's talk about damage limit. This is a dispellable buff. If you watched this video when it first aired, it was listed as undispellable. Smogate and Super Creative have since relisted the video. It is now a dispellable buff, so keep that in mind. Now or Never is a non-attack skill that increases the attack of all allies for two turns before increasing the combat radius of all allies by 10%. Skill 3 is Take the Lead. You acquire two souls upon use and has a 3-4 to four turn cooldown depending on Malagora. Gives an attack buff to Lilius for two turns before attacking the enemy in their blind spot and increases combat radius of Lilius by 35%. When the target's max health is greater than that of Lilius' max health, penetrates the target's defense with penetration rate, increasing proportional to the difference up to a maximum of 100%. A successful attack always results in a critical hit. And finally, the base skill is Go Kyla. Attacks the enemy with Kyla and recovers health. Amount recovered increases proportional to Lilius' attack. A successful attack always results in a critical hit. Soul burn effect for the cost of 10 souls increases the amount of HP recovered. All right, so now that we've read the skills, we have to table back to the giant elephant in the room, the one that if you've been playing this game for more than a year, you probably already realized as soon as you read the skills. Take the lead, the S3 on this thing, is essentially Hua Yong's Emperor's Flaming Strike. So if you haven't been playing Epic 7 for a while, Hua Yong was a character that was nerfed about 11 months ago as of the recording of this video because the S3 Emperor's Flaming Strike was a three-turn cooldown skill that had up to 100% defense penetration if she had significantly less HP than the target, essentially allowing you to kill almost any character in the game in a single strike. She was also incredibly difficult to kill because of her S2 passive, and her S1 was also just pretty damn good in general. 
you're going to hear a lot of comparisons to the, uh, you know, unnerved Hua Young throughout this video, I feel like, because it, you know, Lily is here. She paints a pretty similar picture. Take the lead gives you an attack buff to increase the damage on the character, gives you a CR push to help you cycle on a body that is significantly faster than Hua Young was in the past. It still has the same claws that made Emperor's Flaming Strike such a dangerous move to begin with. If you have significantly less HP on Lilius than the target, it's probably going to just absolutely dunk that character from orbit. The preview videos don't exactly kill things in one hit, but then again, neither did Hua Young's video, uh, at least if memory serves correctly. So who knows when we get the multipliers and we get the character in our hands, maybe the character actually does kill things in a single strike. It is a very dangerous uh, spot to be in. I, it is definitely a design decision to be sure. I don't think I would necessarily want to retread over a design that, um, you know, gave you a bad PR uh, thing in the past, that's for sure. So it's definitely, again, a decision to try to make Midnight Galilius into Hua Young 2.0, to be sure. And as the real kicker here, uh, the S1 and the S3 also say a successful attack always results in a critical hit. Navy Captain Landy, if you've been paying attention to the World Championship or high-level RTA at all, is incredibly dominant. She's one of the most powerful characters in the game. She might be uh, the best damage dealer right now in the entire format. So Midnight Galilius is obviously a very direct answer to that character. That seems to be something that Smilegate likes to do a lot. They sell you the solution, so to speak. They make an overpowered character. They release another overpowered character in order to combat that. And Midnight Galilius seems to be that character. Tabling back to the S2, elaborate scheme. This is essentially a different version of like the Tempest, Surin, Roy Mustang, Spirit Isolene, can't take more than 50% damage uh, in a hit, but with a twist. So obviously this is better because you can't take more than 35% of your max health, which is absolutely disgusting because that means you have to be hit three times to be killed. And yes, that will stack with damage share like Escort or like Arius and will stack with barriers, making this character nightmarish to play against if like you have... I don't know, like a Fallen Cecilia or an ROL with you, you might have to hit this character like five times to kill it. And that's just, man, that's really, really obnoxious. Now, the thing is, unlike Roy Mustang and Tempest Cern, those need to be sealed to be turned off. This one is dispellable, which if you've been paying attention to the stuff from yesterday, we saw the artifact ahead of time by one day and people were questioning, why does it have effect resistance on it? Well, it has the ER on it because you don't want to have your damage limit actually dispelled. And considering that the S1 and the S3 always land a critical strike and you don't want HP at all in order to actually make it so that the take the lead does the most amount of damage, the only stats that this character needs are attack, crit damage, speed, and that's it. So the only other you know slot, the fourth one, can just be effect resistance so that that way damage limit never gets dispelled so pretty much every piece on this character should just be attack percentage critical hit damage percentage speed effect resistance and then if you have to have like a dump stat like on the boots it's probably just flat attack there's not really a reason to build any other stats on the character because of this damage limit that's actually on the character now or never is almost assuredly going to proc every time you use take the lead because you should be bringing the target below half health considering how insanely high the damage appears to be on the move now i get that it's an attack buff for the whole team but like did it also have to have a combat readiness push on top of that like it, this character is probably already going to be played heavily in World Arena, in aggro comps, and also even cleave compositions, and those already have a ton of tempo. Um, cleave might have things like Sashes uh, already in the kit. They already have a ton of CR pushing. Do you really need to give a team CR push on this character uh, as a result? Like on top of that, that's like really, really powerful in and of itself. And then Go Kyla is another one of those. Like, did you really need to do that? Um, it has built-in lifesteal. You have a character that needs three hits to kill, um, and it can stack with damage share and barriers to extend that to like five hits, 
and you gave the character a built-in lifesteal, again, that's a choice. Uh, also, the base attack member can't... It always lands a critical strike, so... Yeah, if it's not obvious by the tone of my voice, it's definitely a decision to try to make a different version of Hua Yang in her prime. Uh, it's not something that I necessarily would have done, but... You know, I'm not here to judge their design decisions. I'm just here to give you my impressions on whether or not I think the character is good. And the answer to that is, yeah, really, really good. I think this character is going to be played heavily in Arena, World Arena, Guild Wars. I'm pretty sure Tristan will find something to make this character insane in PvE, whether that's like uh, Ancient Inheritance or Advent at some point. The, the character just has pretty much everything. We have essentially made a different slash better version of a character that was proven to be top tier in the past, given a power crept version of a passive that has proven to be good in the past, and its only counterplay is ER, uh, not being enough on the character, but we've made a kit in such a way that ER is pretty much a shoe in for every single piece because there's nothing else we can actually build on the character. And then lifesteal plus the fact that um, you can pair her with barriers and damage shares and things like that just makes her even more uh, crazy and obnoxious to deal with. As for what I would play on her, speed set to leverage the 121 base speed seems like a no-brainer. This character seems very aggressive. You just take turn one with her huge uh, amount of speed and just burst something uh, outright with take the lead. Just kill it and remove it from the game immediately. That is definitely a thing I think that uh, most people will go for wouldn't surprise me if somebody tried to do like counter set because if you just get a bunch of counters you can't really kill the character um, that would definitely be really funny as for offsets uh, resist is probably the budget option uh, because again there's not really much else you can use on the character because uh, she always lands a critical hit so we don't need that uh, doesn't want hp doesn't really care about bulk at all so defense is also a wash but I think for most people, Torrent is probably the no-brainer offset. It gives a damage increase, so that way you can just instantly kill a tank or a bruiser outright with the S3. And then uh, it obviously lowers the health as well, which is super good with not only her passive, but also the passive component of the S3 take the lead. So yeah, it's probably speed Torrent for most people, but again, there's probably some cheeky builds out there with like things like Counter, um, or things like uh, resist as an offset choice. All right, to round out the video, let's talk about real quick Lilius's artifact, which is Hostess of the Banquet. Increases the effect resistance of the wearer by 20 to 40% based on artifact level. When attacking, if the target's health is 50% or more, increases damage dealt by 8 to 16%, again, depending on artifact level. So it's kind of like a portrait of the saviors in that you get increased uh, damage here when the target has more than 50% of their health which is pretty good. And then there is obviously the built-in effect resistance, which synergizes really, really well with damage limit on the character. I think that time will tell if this is the best option for the character. I think if you want to have one with a bunch of ER on it, then yes, this is definitely one to, to go for. I think for players that are primarily turn two base, like myself, somebody who plays standard, an ER variant of the character is probably pretty good and this is probably pretty good on it for those of you who are cleave or very aggressive players i think wind rider is probably going to end up being the best option for you because it gives the most amount of damage you get to kill a character at the start and then she just becomes absolutely nightmarish to deal with because not only do they have to deal with the three tap from the damage limit but now you'll be in stealth and then your s1 will just do a super amount of damage which is really really good uh, as well in the character that said, there's probably some other builds as well that are probably strong on the character. She herself is a thief, so you have access to things like Shepherd of the Hollow and Double Edged to Crescent for the memes and Moonlight Dreamblade. So there's definitely like a ton of options that you could go for. I could see people trying to high roll with like Alexis Basket, although I think you know Wind Rider in general is just a better option. But yeah, um, character is pretty insane. Has a plethora of good artifact choices. Time will tell if it's just you know ignoring ER and just going all in on speed and damage, or if we just go for um, a really high gear score build that has a bunch of speed, ER, and damage. Again, it, we got to see the multipliers on the character to see where things uh, shake up with her. But uh, overall, on paper, character's a definite pull. 
character is almost assuredly uh, a top tier character in almost every form of PvP. And those are my thoughts on Midnight Galilius. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. And let me know if I made any mistakes as well in the video. If you're watching this video on the day that it airs, I will be on Epic 7's Orbis Overdrive later on today on the official Twitch channel. I'll link that stream down in this video's description. It goes live at 7 p.m. EST, 4 p.m. PST. Hope to see you all there. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye now.